Uh, I am a um, business developer at Vistra Moza. And as introduced by Urs, uh, I, am also, I used to um, be a resident citizenship officer at Vistra Moza when I first joined in 2018. So I used to enroll the applications to all the various programs that are offered here in Moza and assist all the families in um, relocating or obtaining second residency or citizenship in Malta. Uh, I myself, I am an expat in Malta. I relocated here from France six years ago almost. Um, so I would say I have first-hand experience to, uh, when it comes to the process and relocating and get, getting acquainted with the island. Um, so hopefully I will be in the best position to, to assist you and to answer any of your questions. So um, today I will focus on the investment migration um, that we have offered uh, in Malta. And we start with a brief introduction of the Maltese islands. For those of you who may not know, uh, Malta uh, is composed of three main islands and we are just located in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, just between the north coast of Africa and Europe's main continent. Um, we have a very uh, prime location, I would say, and a very nice connectivity. Um, we have flights to every city in Europe and direct flights to, to Dubai, so it would be very easy for people to Dubai to come visit Malta and vice versa. Uh, Malta used to be a British colony back in the day, but now it is a fully independent country, member of the European Union, of the Schengen area, and uh, of the Eurozone. We have a thriving economy, uh, one of the most thriving economy in Europe, uh, I would say. As you can see from the ratings, uh, those are uh, stable ratings that were issued very recently, so after the, the COVID pandemic, and uh, we are doing very well, very low unemployment rate, 3.5% um, as of November last year. Uh, we always had very low unemployment rate because there is a lot of uh, job positions to be filled. Um, and it is estimated that for last year, the GDP growth uh, is of 5%, so uh, very high GDP growth considering uh, the year, the couple of years that we have been through. Um, but again, uh, thanks to the thriving economy, to uh, the decisions from the government to uh, assist uh, and keep the businesses afloat, we were able to, um, to live with COVID and um, basically thrive and the business was not so much um, uh, impacted. Uh, so before I move on to the various advantages of the uh, different programs, I would like to show you a short clip of Malta uh, so that you can have a better idea of the life in Malta if you have never visited. And I will kindly ask the organizer to start the video for me.
I hope that you enjoyed the video and that uh, you might want to visit Malta to uh, get a first-hand experience yourself. So on top of the beautiful lifestyle that we have in Malta, uh, there is a number of advantages um, that uh, the beneficiaries of those programs that I will uh, discuss um, about um, can, can benefit from. Most importantly, the indefinite right to, to stay in Malta. So under those programs, one can stay as little as long as they want on the island, but they can also access the Schengen area visa-free, which uh, gives uh, access to a number of countries um, uh, for, for pleasure or business purposes. All programs are family friendly, which means that descendant and ascendant generation can apply as dependent along with the main applicant. Um, the country in general, the government is business friendly. It gives a lot of incentives uh, to, to start a business in Malta. Obviously, the country is English speaking. So Maltese and English are the two official languages in Malta. So the integration is very quick, very easy. Everything is written and, and everyone is speaking in Maltese, in English and in Maltese. Uh, so it makes, um, it makes life very easy. Uh, we are a large number of expats like, like myself uh, living in Malta. Um, I can go on and on with, uh, with uh, all the advantages. I, I would mention, uh, I think that the most important nowadays would be the healthcare, the high quality of healthcare that, that uh, can be found in, in Malta. Um, both private and public sector are delivering excellent healthcare, which I think is important for uh, it's an important point to take into consideration when families want to relocate in another country, especially now with uh, the crisis that we have um, gone through. Uh, and speaking of which, Malta has had um, has led the vaccination rate in Europe and in the world. Uh, we actually reached our herd immunity very early last year, and currently, 70%, uh, approximately 70% of all adult population has, already has the boost, the booster dose. Uh, so it makes it a safe, um, safe place to live. Uh, we were able, thanks to that, to avoid strict lockdown. And we have lived rather normally this past couple of years, unlike some countries that had to unfortunately go to, to strict measures and lockdown. So there are many programs available in, in Malta. And uh, I, I think there's a program for every need and every uh, profile. Uh, to name a few, there is the multi-citizenship by naturalization for exceptional services by direct investment. So this is the residency program leading to multi-citizenship. There is also the Malta Permanent Residence Program, which as its name says, is a permanent residence program. The Global Residence Program is a tax residency program, which gives a special Malta tax status to the applicants, to the beneficiaries. The new program in town would be the Nomad Residence Permit, which gives residency to remote workers. Uh, there's also the Malta Retirement Program, which is a special tax status uh, and residency in Malta for pensioners, and the Highly Qualified Person Scheme, which is um, a tax scheme for um, high qualified uh, positions. So uh, I am conscious of the time, so I will get I will get into more details only on the three uh, main programs. And if you have any questions, then I'd be happy to to answer answer them. So the citizenship by naturalization for exceptional services, as I mentioned, uh, is it's a residency program leading to citizenship. So at the end of the, the program, if uh, the applicant is successful, uh, he and all his dependents will be granted with a multi passport and identity card. This passport uh, can be used to travel visa-free to over 185 countries, which does not only include Schengen area, but uh, USA and Canada. So it is a very broad and powerful passport. Um, under this program, what is very attractive as well is that you would have the indefinite right to leave, to work or study, not only in Malta, but in any country uh, member of the European Union, just uh, having access to all opportunities that are is available to multi citizen to any other uh, citizen. I think my personal example uh, in this case would be that as a French citizen, I decided to come to study um, in Malta, the University of Malta, and I didn't need a student visa. I simply moved to Malta by taking a plane ticket. Um, and also, um, if when I wanted to start working, I didn't need a work permit. So it is as easy as that. And I can do this to any other country uh, in the EU. So um, this, this uh, program is divided in three different stages. 
the residency stage, eligibility stage, and citizenship stage. The residency stage um, would last either one or three years. It is um, up to the applicant uh, to, to know what route they want to, to take. Uh, during this period of time, uh, it is not necessarily to permanently relocate in Malta, but the applicant would be granted a multi residency card that one can use to travel within the Schengen area already. Um, the eligibility stage would be the stage where the application is vetted and see if the applicant is eligible to apply for citizenship. And at the end, the citizenship stage would be when hopefully this, the application would be finalized and the applicant will become a multi citizen. So this program is targeting uh, ultra high net worth individuals, citizen proper individuals, uh, because of the total due diligence and of the significant exceptional investments to be made. There is also a real estate condition to purchase or lease qualifying property in Malta and to make a philanthropic donation to a local NGO. So moving on to the Malta Permanent Residence Program. So this residence program would grant the successful applicant a remote residence card as well as a certificate of residency. The certificate is valid for life as long as you would fulfill the, um, the condition. Uh, so basically, your uh, right, your residency right in Malta is guaranteed, and uh, it is also possible to um, pass on the certificate to future generation. The Maltese residency card, as I mentioned earlier, can be used to travel within the Schengen area up to three months in every six month period. And uh, under this scheme, uh, anyone uh, that is benefiting from the MPRP would be able to reside in Malta for as long or as little as uh, they wish. There is no minimum stay requirement. So this program is targeting fit and proper individuals and can prove uh, of having a minimum capital of uh, 500,000 euros. There is a financial contribution to be made as well uh, to the uh, to the, the residency Malta agency. <clears throat> a real estate condition, uh, just like for the first program, to purchase or lease a foreign fine property in Malta and a smaller philanthropic donation to be made to a local NGO. So the last program that I will talk about is the Global Residence Program, which is a tax program. So under this program, the applicants would also get a multi residence card that they can also use to travel within the Schengen area. However, in this program, Malta would be considered as the primary place of residence. Um, so even though there is no minimum stay requirement in Malta, one needs to make sure not to spend more than six months in another uh, in a year in another jurisdiction so as to not to shift the tax uh, residency because Malta would be considered as tax uh, tax residents of the applicant of the individual so this um, this uh, program is attractive because of the special Malta tax status that uh, the applicant can benefit from which is no tax on foreign income that on foreign source income that is not remitted to Malta there is a flat income tax rate of 15 percent of uh, on all income that is arising outside Malta but um, remitted to Malta and a flat income tax rate of 35 percent on all income arising in Malta. So this is all subject to an income uh, tax payable of minimum of 15,000 uh, euros per year. This program is targeting fit and proper individuals as usual which are in um, receipt of stable and, um, and regular resources. There is a small administrative fee uh, to settle and as usual a real estate condition to, to purchase or lease a qualifying property in Malta. And this, this condition is for is the same for a program. Only the, the, the amount, the values of the properties may vary, but this is simple simply because any holder of residency card or ID card in Malta must hold a residential address in, in Malta. So the GRP and the MTRP are two uh, residence programs, tax residence and residence program respectively, but they do not lead to citizenship. The only program that is leading to citizenship would be the multi-citizenship um, for exceptional services that I mentioned uh, first. So um, I will just conclude this, uh, this presentation uh, by speaking a bit about our services that we offer here um, in Malta. So we do have uh, our residency and citizenship team uh, that has over 20 years experience in this, in this domain. Uh, we pride ourselves in being a one-stop shop because we do not only enroll the applications, but we offer services on all related matters, may it be uh, under compliance, uh, we still tax returns for GRP applicants, for example, 
Um, we provide assistance with real estate for the lease, the lease agreement, for example, property management, concert services, and so on. Uh, so we really build a relationship with our clients and uh, assist them with all their needs and requirements that they have in Malta. Our other main focus would be company formation. So we do have um, a big corporate team here at Vistra Malta that takes care of corporate structures, trust, foundation, accounting, and tax. Um, so um, it is known that Malta is a very attractive jurisdiction for new business because we have one of the most advantageous um, corporate tax regime in, uh, in Europe and also for all the incentives. So it is very easy to, to, uh, to set up a business in Malta. And most of our clients, what they would do is use Malta as their base to develop the, their business in Europe. And we can uh, absolutely assist with that. Lastly, our, our last division will be the Marine and Aviation Division. We do have a large team as well that is taking care of um, the administration of super yachts and, and private jets. So as mentioned by, by Urs, Vistra is present all over the world. So we are represented by um, over 5,000 employees working in over 80 um, offices across over 45 jurisdictions. We do have an office in Dubai. And speaking of Dubai, um, I'm pleased to, to inform you that Vistra Malta will be the gold sponsor of um, the Invest Pro event that is taking place in two weeks' time at the Oboroi Hotel in, in Dubai. So um, if you will be able to make it there, I'll be pleased to, um, to um, assist you in person and to meet and see how we can help you with your individual or, or corporate requirements. Uh, of course, for those of you who might not make it to, to Dubai in two weeks' time, I'd be happy to take any question or you feel free to send me anything on my email, charlotte.brun.vistra.com, or my, uh, my managing director, Dr. Esther Schambri, will be uh, very happy to assist you uh, or helping you finding the suitable jurisdiction for your family to relocate to. So if Malta is not the right fit, we have other options uh, to, to assist you um, all over the world. So uh, that, that's it for my end. Maybe uh, if there is any question, I can answer them now or at the end of the session as, a, as is better time, from a timing perspective. Well, thanks a lot, Charlotte, for the very good presentation and really it makes you. me feel that I would like to go to Malta. There's a good flight connection from Dubai to Malta via Cyprus. And uh, that, of course, is great uh, to know. And it's also a pleasure that you will come to Dubai. There is a question concerning, since I'm in Dubai, there are many people working, living in Dubai. They are from originally Iran, Syria. When they mm -hmm. apply for passport, is that an issue that they, they will say, OK, that is, a, there's a problem with it. They will not get it, or it takes a long, a lot longer for them than for others. Um, so, for the citizenship by naturalization and the permanent residence program, unfortunately, there are a few countries that are precluded from applying to this program, and uh, Iran, for example, would be would be one of them at at this stage. However, GRP uh, can be an alternative for residency in Malta or in that case, uh, other European countries uh, like Portugal, which uh, we can also assist with. We, we, it's actually not the first time that uh, we have inquiries from individuals from these countries as we, we've been coming to, to Dubai a few times this past uh, couple of years. And uh, this is something that we can always find a solution and an alternative for these individuals. Okay, thanks a lot, Charlotte. That's, I'm very pleased to hear that so that I can inform those people who are inquired to me about it so that I can tell them. Then there's another question. If a resident without domicile opens a company in Malta and lives there and lives here, he will be able to receive a tax refund, 30%, and pay only 5%? Or how is that done? So there is there is a tax refund mechanism in place where whereby the... Um, Effective tax rate. So the corporate tax rate is of 35% in Malta. However, with the tax refund mechanism, the effective tax rate can be reduced to uh, 5%. Uh, there is a way to, uh, to uh, structure your, your business in Malta. And uh, that's something that I will actually go into more details, uh, detail when we'll have more time um, during my presentation in Dubai. 
but that is something that we can uh, we can structure for for the individual. Yes. Okay, then there is a question. What are the requirements for due diligence when obtaining citizenship that must be taken into account by an applicant? Is so, it uh, necessary for the applicant to have a real estate in Malta? I mean, uh, apartment, villa? Is there any specific demands for this property? So uh, there is uh, actually, yes, there is a condition to, um, to either purchase or lease a property in Malta of a minimum uh, value. Um, usually what our clients would do is start, to, start by leasing a property in Malta so that they get acquainted with the island. Um, and it needs to be leased for the duration of the residency period, as well as for the first five years after obtaining citizenship. So that, that's one thing. Um, when it comes to due diligence, the, the main thing that I, I would like to mention is that um, the, the uh, authorities and even this trial onboarding stage would go through a certain uh, tier of due diligence. Um, they would obtain police records, police conduct, um, to ensure that the applicants are fit and proper. Uh, of course, um, it, it, is, uh, it is important uh, to grant citizenship to only fit and proper individuals. So um, a lot of information will be required at, at application stage to, uh, to ensure that, uh, that, the application, that the applicants, but also all the dependents and business relations are, are fit and proper. I can uh, surely send you a list of documentations that will be required, but it's basically all KYC documentation that is usually required from passport, proof of residence, uh, proof of assets, sort of wealth, birth certificate, and so on. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. And is there a difference in the amount of direct investments from Malta residents and non-residents? Is the same amount applying or is there a difference? For the real estate, sorry. Yeah, is there a difference in an amount of direct investments from Malta residents and non-residents? If you're a resident, you need to pay less than uh, if you're not resident. For, for the citizenship, no, it's the same amount uh, because the, uh, the permanent resident would not lead to citizenship. So it would be a, a completely new application. So it is the same amount for everyone. Okay, and then, then the last question. I mentioned before Syria, Iran, that there, are there any other countries which could be problematic? Yemen comes to my mind or Sudan? Um, from from my, my memory, Yemen, I believe, is also uh, a country prohibited. Uh, I have encountered in the past Afghanistan, uh, individuals and families from Afghanistan as well that were not able to, uh, to submit their application, unfortunately. Uh, for the citizenship and MPRP, but again, um, as uh, as I mentioned, there are other alternatives that we can assist with. And if you want, I would send you the um, the full list of, of countries so you have a better idea. Okay, thanks a lot, Charlotte. Really appreciated all the presentation.